What's up guys, today I'm going to be going over everything to do with cauliflower ears. How and why people get them, what to do if you get one, and finally how you can prevent yourself from getting them. So let's get straight into it. What is cauliflower ear and how do people get it? Well, there are several ways in which you can develop auricular hematoma, formerly known as cauliflower ear. However, the most common way is through trauma to the ear, where the ear experiences some blunt force. This commonly occurs in sports such as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, rugby and other martial arts. After the ear is subjected to trauma, the blood vessels within the ear begins to disrupt the ear's cartilage and surrounding tissue. This is where most people will be subjected to permanent deformation in the ear as the cartilage breaks away and doesn't return to its original state. As the cartilage has not broken away, it has allowed the blood to congregate in one area which results in the classic cauliflower ear look. A little fun fact for you guys, cartilage doesn't have its own direct blood supply. Instead, it receives nutrients and oxygen through diffusion of other surrounding tissues. So what does this mean? Well, this lack of direct blood supply makes it impossible for the body to naturally clear the accumulated blood so it stays as it is. As the body is unable to clear the blood accumulated, it only gets worse as any more pressure around the ear increases the amount of blood accumulated, making the ear bigger and bigger. If nothing is done to treat the ear, then the body begins a healing process, which results in the cauliflower ear shape being maintained as the blood cannot be dispersed. This is how many fighters and rugby players have deformed and crushed looking ears as this process occurs to them on a regular basis. Okay, so what should you do once you get cauliflower ear? Well, the treatment varies depending on how long you've taken to get it treated or if you get it treated at all. Option one, if you act within the first day or two, you have a quick and easy solution whereby you can have the ear drained through a needle as the blood is still relatively fresh. This is the best case scenario as you can go back to training pretty soon as you won't be risking the chance of infection and your ear is still intact. If you waited and now it's been a few days or even a few weeks, then it's likely that you have to have your ear cut open and have the hardened blood pushed out then stitched shut. This is the only option at the time as the blood is pretty solid and almost impossible to drain so making an incision on the ear to remove it is the only option. Now with this solution, you will be out of training for up to a week maybe, as there's a strong chance of infection because the ear has been cut open and stitched shut. Now, obviously this solution is incredibly painful, but it will reduce the probability of your ears being seriously deformed for life. Finally, if you don't treat the ear, then you'll be left with quite a few problems. Of course, it all depends on the severity of the cauliflower ear, but it can lead to an array of unpleasant conditions. One of them is hearing loss, as the inflammation could worsen to a point where your ear canal is too small to allow sound to pass through. Another is a high risk of infection, as the accumulated blood in your ear is a breeding ground for bacteria, which can only lead to further damage to your ear. To summarize, you need to act fast so that you can quickly drain the ear and not have to worry about it getting any worse and stopping you from training in the future. Some people regard the cauliflower ear as a badge of honor. Yes, it does look kind of cool, I guess, but if you're training a lot, having a cauliflower ear ends up becoming somewhat inevitable. What I'm trying to say is that even after you get your ear drained, it's very likely that you'll still have a deformed ear as the cartilage in your ear is gone forever. So you may as well get it drained and just get back straight into training. Otherwise, you risk damaging your ear even further. How to prevent cauliflower ear? Here are two tips you can implement into your training and the last one has been the most useful for me. Firstly, wear protective headgear. For martial arts, it would be ear guards, something similar to what wrestlers wear as it covers the ears and prevents the opportunity for any trauma to occur to your ears. The pros are that most ear guards can be lightweight and give you more than adequate protection for your ears. I would recommend wearing ear guards if you recently had a cauliflower ear or if you are training somewhat casually. However, there are some drawbacks. These are more apparent in BJJ and other martial arts as they can seriously hinder your ability to escape guillotines, triangles, and other chokes, as it's nearly impossible to slide out of a choke whilst wearing ear guards. Also, some ear guards make it very difficult to hear during training. Ear guards, however, are brilliant for wrestlers and rugby, 
But for MMA, the cons are very taxing and will to a degree affect your performance. I'd recommend to wear ear guards only if absolutely necessary. The second option is stop training. I'm joking. If you've tried ear guards before and you hate wearing them, it's best if you probably just be more careful in training instead of wearing them. And just be more mindful uh, with your ears when training as in certain sports, cauliflower ear are somewhat inevitable. So you can only try your best to be mindful of your ears or just slap on an ear guard. I want you guys to comment down below if you've ever had a cauliflower ear and what you did when you realized you had one. And if you want me to do a full video on ear guards and what is the best ear guard for each sport, then I want you to drop a like and comment down below and I'll make sure to get one out ASAP. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.